The answer to this puzzle is <clears throat> that there is enormous time in the sun and there also is a very high number of particles, number of protons which can get together and <clears throat> the uh, density of matter near the center of the sun being very high, you get an energy production which is large enough. Two ergs per gram of sun per second. And uh, because the sun has existed for four billion years, uh, there's enough time to produce all the energy that the sun has radiated uh, during the interval. So the sun radiates just at the rate that um, is observed. To be quite uh, honest, when we first did the calculation, the sun radiated too much because we had those 40 million degrees. That's where we put it down anyway. But then uh, Taylor persuaded me to come after all to that conference in Washington. And at that conference was Strandman, the Swedish uh, astrophysicist who was most of his life in Denmark and part of his life in Chicago, uh, who had uh, gone into Ellington's calculations uh, independently and uh, had come to the conclusion to adopt the suggestion of Russell and Unser, namely that hydrogen is the main material in the sun. May I interrupt you for just a second? <clears throat> the, the person who really should be given credit for that is Cecilia Payne. Cecilia Payne. Put, yes. And it's Norris, I mean, it's Russell who picks up on that and popularizes it. But it's really Cecilia Payne, the Botchkin, who's really the first person who... Well, I'm glad to learn. Yeah. But that's... Uh, but uh, it took quite a long time from their suggestion until uh, Ellington himself and Strongman, I think independently and I believe simultaneously, uh, took up that idea and said, okay, the sun is made of hydrogen. And now our temperature goes down from 40 million degrees to 12 million. 